Hello, welcome to the channel and to episode 3 of this Let's Play for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. My name is Vormithrax, so you can call me Vorm for short. And in this episode, we're going to continue into our game. We're finally into some actual gameplay screens, so you can see what this game's all about. I'm still going to continue showing interface stuff. Uh, the intent on these first few videos is to give people brand new to the game uh, enough information that they can actually get playing and have the tools and uh, knowledge to move around the game screens to actually start enjoying themselves. It can be a pretty overwhelming game given the detail level that's involved and all the various hotkeys and screens so I think it's important to uh, take our time and go through enough of the information in detail to give uh, starter characters and starter players a decent chance at uh, learning the game and having a good time. Um, I'll be going some more videos as time goes by and getting into some actual gameplay uh, directly but uh, like I said I want these first few videos to be mostly informational. So in this particular episode we're finally into the gameplay screen and I'm going to focus on the interface, uh, what the different interface elements do and mean, some of the hotkeys and menu choices you can go through, and I'll get some starting uh, character development going as well. So, hope you enjoy the video and let's get started. So, this, like I mentioned at the end of my last video, is our main character interface. You can see the shelter that we start in, the evac shelter. This is an NPC that's friendly to us that we're going to talk to in just a bit and see what he can offer for us. Uh, there's a computer screen up in the corner. We've got some stairs down into a basement area. And then each wall of the shelter has a couple of doors leading outside. So. The main interface elements is your gameplay screen here and all the detailed information about your character and what's happening around you is going to be listed on this side of the screen. Um, to start with, you can change this view by using the Z or Shift Z keys to move forward or backward through some various zoom levels. Basically, you want to pick the zoom level that's appropriate for whatever tactical situation you might be in. While I'm inside uh, like this environment, and I know there's nothing near me that's going to be dangerous, I could zoom in. This is zoomed all the way out, and I'm just tapping the Z key to move through each of these zoom levels. Basically, find a zoom level that is comfortable for you and what you're trying to accomplish at the time, and you can quickly and easily move forward and backward just by using Z or Shift Z, like so. So that's important. And next up, we're going to talk about some of the hotkeys and menus. First thing I'd like to do, though, is have you press the escape key. This brings up the main menu. You can do some very common and uh, powerful things like save and quit out of the game. Quick save. Action menu. This is a very important one that I think a lot of people don't know about when they're first starting the game. And I'll show you what it does here in just a moment. Uh, you can go to some of the managers and then the main options and key bindings. The options screen is similar to when you were setting the game up initially and you can change the basic inter interface elements and uh, sound and things like that. But I'd like to go to key bindings first. There's one particular key binding I want to set up and to point out for new players to set up. Um, you can scroll down the list here and see what keys are bound to what uh, keyboard keys. So this is a good thing to review so you can kind of get an idea of what possibilities there are in the game if you're new to the game. And I still review to it or still review it fairly often, um, especially if I've been away from the game for any period of time. Um, but what I'm going to have you do is go down to the very bottom of the screen and near the bottom here we have an option right here called the action menu and it starts unbound I believe and it's going to be important to bind that to something especially as a new player. So to work this menu you can see up here the keys you press to make any changes so I'd recommend you do uh, let's do a global so let's press the equals key then it'll put a list of uh, letters next to it you can press the letter next to the action menu so I'm going to press H and it says pick a new key and I want just the home key so let's do this again equal key H oops all right let's remove the key binding all right so now it's unbound so let's try this again Okay, sorry that took a moment. 
Um, so I've got the action menu bound to the home key and now that that's done I'm gonna pretty much get out of this menu now. The rest of it is fairly straightforward regarding key bindings. You can adjust things if you'd like or just use this as kind of a reference. But I'm going to hit escape, say yes, and that gets us back out of here. And what that's going to do is when I press the home key now, it directly jumps into the action menu. So it's just a one-click way of bringing this menu up. You can also use escape and then go to the action menu to do the same thing, but I prefer just a hotkey to do it. And the reason this is important is there are a lot of commands in this game, and especially if you're new to the game, it's going to take a little while to actually memorize some of the actions or even know that certain things are possible. So this is kind of a nested menu system that will show you what you can do, and it's broken down into categories. So if I wanted to check for inventory information, for example, I could go down to number three, press enter, and it's going to show all of the keys and options that are available in the inventory category. So if I just wanted to open my character's inventory, I could press the lowercase i. The advanced inventory management is the slash, a plus to go to the relayering of armor and clothing screen, and so on. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but pretty much everything that has to do with inventory management shows in this screen. And you can either pick it from the list or just figure out what the hotkey for it is and then press the hotkey. You can also back up in the menu and go pick some other general area. So if I wanted to go craft, for example, this shows what hotkeys are associated with the crafting actions in the game. Or combat. So tons of choices and this is a good thing to review occasionally or if you just cannot remember a hotkey you can jump in here and quickly move through the menus and pick whatever thing you were trying to do. So great for starting people especially uh, to know that that's available. Alright, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the mouse. I mentioned in the first video that you can't really click on anything with the mouse, but you'll notice as I'm waving this around that in this section of the screen over here, the information is changing. Basically, whatever you're pointing at, you'll get kind of a hot tip box over there that will give you some details on what you're pointing at. So with my mouse pointing at the NPC, you can see that his name is Hank Lecrum. He's wielding a Ruger Mini 14, and he's wearing some cargo pants, tank top, and some other various uh, clothing items. If I point up here, it just tells you that it's an impassable object. It's a locker. This is a bench. We've got stairs, a computer console, a closed wood door, and so on. So you can quickly use your mouse to point at something, like I mentioned. Another method via the keyboard is to use the X key. This is an examine key, and once you press X, you'll get a detached reticle that you can move around with your numeric keyboard keys. And whatever you move that over will give you similar information to earlier. So just like pointing your mouse at it. Press escape to get out of that mode. And that's the mouse and the X key. There's tons of other menu options and information you can go through, so let's kind of just go through some of the major ones. Uh, I've covered the zoom key. Let's go to your character sheet. So shift 2 will bring up your character sheet. Pretty important. It's going to show your current stats and below that and in the information box right here and here it gives you some details about what that particular stat is providing you uh, status wise and general information wise. You can press the tab key to move to the next section. This is your encumbrance and warmth screen. So you've got encumbrance for various body locations and each of these are independently tracked for how encumbered they are and how warm or cold they are. Both are important statistics. So this column here is showing the encumbrance value and this column here is showing the warmth value or how cold they are. Um, Obviously, hot and cold are important, and they can have negative effects if you go too far in either direction. So you want to be careful of what kind of environment you're in, whether you're dry or wet, uh, whether you're hot or cold. And it's kind of a balancing act. You want to provide yourself with the most uh, protection and layering of clothing and armor pieces that you can, but you don't want to go overboard because that can over-encumber you and make it difficult to perform actions or to move uh, and so on. The 
warmth section is important because you can get too warm and too cold and they have varying obvious effects but they are completely tracked in the game and it's important to know what's causing any of the messages you might be seeing in your status screens in regards to the warmth. Um, encumbrance is directly affected. Whatever number you see here is actually going to have a direct effect on certain statistics. So when I have the torso highlighted, I've got 21 points of torso encumbrance. And you'll notice here that, that is going to cause melee attack rolls to be at minus 21%, dodge skill at minus 2.0, swimming costs are higher, melee and thrown attacks cost additional movement points. So any action you try to take in the game is going to cost a certain number of movement or action points. The more encumbered you are, the more points it costs, or the longer it takes, essentially. So it's important to know what these encumbrance values are and to manage them accordingly. Certain cases, it might be okay to be encumbered because you might be aware of the number and are not doing the things that are associated with the large negatives there, and so you don't care. Torso is a pretty important one because it affects a large portion of the combat information. Head is not as important. Usually this is just hats, helmets, things like that, and whatever it allows you to put on is usually good. Certain things you can layer and have more than one of, um, others you can't, so it's important to uh, put as much on your head as it'll let you do. It doesn't really have too many negative effects regarding encumbrance. Eyes is your perception when checking traps and firing ranged weapons. Also dispersion when throwing items, so that's an important stat. You don't want to be too encumbered there, but it's kind of hard to do since you can't wear too many things on your eyes. Things like glasses and safety glasses and face shields are potential items you can put in your eye slot. Mouth mostly has to do with your stamina recovery rate, so if you've got uh, too many wool scarves wrapped around your mouth to stay warm, it can actually affect your breathing and make it more difficult to recover your stamina. Arms is another important one for certain types of combat. It affects your stamina for melee attacks and accuracy with ranged weapons. So if you're primarily using ranged weapons like a bow or guns, you'll note that your torso is mainly involved in melee attacks, so you might be okay with over-encumbering your torso with extra layers or armor as long as your uh, arms are relatively light and freed up so you can fire your ranged weapons accurately. Hands uh, also have a pretty big effect in regards to certain types of combat, and you can see what it's going to affect down here and make adjustments accordingly. Legs and feet are fairly obviously mostly involved in movement costs. Uh, the less encumbered you are, the easier it is for you to move around. The more encumbered, the slower you're going to be, and the more points it's going to cost to do certain actions. So the color coding you see is a general indication of how good or bad something is. When the color goes green or yellow, that indicates that something you're generally going to have to pay attention to. If it goes red, that's definitely something bad. You want to make some adjustments where you can. Next category over is the skills category. This you can't directly affect, so it's just showing your base movement cost and speed for the terrain you're moving through. Skills is all the skills that are in the game that your character can learn, what your current level in that skill is, and then also the progress towards the next level. As you perform actions related to that skill, it'll increase your percentage uh, bar here, or your percentage uh, amount towards the next level. When it hits 100, you'll go up a level in that skill. Skills are very, very important. They factor heavily into what you can build in the game, a lot of the actions you can take, and most importantly, when you're fabricating things to use, uh, what skills you have in various categories are going to denote what recipes you have access to, and in addition to that, uh, books you have available in the library that you've collected it through your wanderings in the wasteland are going to be used for the recipes as well. Um, but very important to know these skills, uh, the, certain ones are much, much more useful than others initially, but they all have their place in the game. Higher is better. Um, you want to work your way up as quickly as possible you know, through these skills because they make a huge difference in your survivability in the wasteland. All right, and then finally, the traits that you picked from the game. And other traits may appear on this list depending on things that happen to your character while you're running through the game. So you want to be careful uh, to keep an eye on that to see if any negative traits have appeared that you need to be careful of. And then also any temporary effects that might be in play. So if you're uh, 
got the flu or have been bitten or lots of different things. So anytime you get a message on the screen over here that you're not sure about that seems to have affected your character, you want to jump in your character sheet real quick and check for any negative stats or effects that are affecting you and get things taken care of as quickly as possible. So that's your character sheet. Next up, we're going to look at the inventory. If you press the I key, you can bring up your inventory screen and the arrow keys move up and down through the inventory. You can use the right and left arrow to move left and right through the columns. And whatever you have highlighted, you can get information on. So if I want to look at my pocket knife, I can just highlight it and press enter. And it gives details about my pocket knife. There's a lot of fairly complicated systems in the game. It models a lot. I can't go into details about everything, but I just want to point out some general things to keep an eye on. And when I actually start into the more gameplay-specific playthrough, uh, I'll try to spend a little more time detailing certain things as they come up. But when examining an item, a couple things to note. It, everything in the game that you're going to carry around is going to have a volume and a weight, and those are important because you can only carry so much volume and so much weight on your character. It's going to have, for a weapon, it's going to have various combat factors, like uh, this one has a pierce value of 7, a minus 2 to hit bonus, and it costs 67 action or movement points to actually perform an attack with that particular item. The higher this number is, the slower it is, essentially. So while this number is pretty fast for a hand-to-hand uh, -hand weapon, it's got very low damage. So a pocket knife obviously isn't going to be the best to try to survive in the, uh, the apocalypse with. We're going to look for some better weapons here shortly. Then below, it's going to show you various qualities that this particular item provides you. And these are kind of like... Um, not sure how to describe them other than to say they're the qualities, but the pocket knife is going to provide you with a level 12 butchering quality, level 1 cutting quality, and level 1 fine cutting quality. Um, this is important because when you're trying to perform certain actions in the game or trying to craft things, it will require depending on the action or the crafting recipe, that you have a tool in your inventory that meets certain requirements. So if I'm trying to build a log cabin or something, then I might need an axe and it'll say it requires a cutting quality of four. Um, so there's various requirements for the recipes. When you see the recipe or the action you're trying to do, just check to see the requirements and see if you can meet that with whatever items you've got available. Then it's got a short description, and you can see over here many of the common actions that you can perform with this particular item. So I could wield the item, so it takes you down here, or over here it'll show you, it takes you several seconds to wield your pocket knife, and you can see on my little character portrait, I'll zoom in, he's wielding a pocket knife. Zoom back out here for a second, bring our inventory back up, and you'll see over here there's now a weapon held category on the right hand side. So this right hand side is almost always going to show items you are wielding or wearing. And on the left is items you're just carrying in your general inventory. It will show you here your current pounds for weight. So I'm currently carrying 10 pounds out of my 108 capacity and I'm carrying 0.51 volume out of 4.91 available. So that's going to fill up really quickly and the way to increase that is by finding clothes that have pockets and backpacks, uh, satchels, all sorts of things that you can do to increase the volume that you can carry. Um, weight is more a function of your raw strength and uh, some other perks and abilities that you might get to increase, but usually volume is the thing that most people run into problems with. So knowing ways to increase the amount of volume you can carry is pretty important. Alright, so next thing we're going to look at, that's the inventory screen. Oops, jumping through some screens here. Let's uh, actually just move around and get some things done and I'll kind of explain some other things as I go along. So we're going to start moving around the world just using the numeric keypad. And each time I move, it's making a little bit of sound, which you can see over here. And currently, because all the doors and windows are closed, this is actually a fairly dark environment, which you can see here it says very dark. My character has night vision, which improves his vision or ability to see. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to chat with this NPC. We're going to hit Shift C to chat, and I can yell in general, or I can pick him in particular to talk to. 
and you can see a menu system he says well I guess it's just us and I have a few choices over here of things I can talk to him about I'm gonna say what should we do now and he responds well maybe we should start boarding up this place my response is mm, okay I'm gonna ask him if there's anything I can do for him he responds I just have one job for you want to hear about it well, I'm gonna say yes so I'm gonna pick a from the menu he says I've lost so many friends please help me find a patient please find me a patient list from the regional hospital or doctor's office I just want to know who might still be out there and this is basically a quest for the NPC I'm gonna say sure I'll do that and he says thanks I suppose it won't change what has already happened but it will bring me some closure I'm gonna just say not a problem well, actually let's, let's say can you share some equipment see if you'll give us anything to help us and he's asking why should I share my equipment with you we've got a few choices here the persuade ability or persuade percent is important uh, you've got a few different options and it tells you in brackets what is going to affect that choice and the chances it's going to work or not I'm going to pick persuade because uh, item B because it's got 97 percent chance to succeed and that's partially because I accepted the quest that increased my persuasion chance because he's feeling a little more kindly towards me so when I press B it's gonna roll the dice and apparently we succeeded because he gave me a small battery small bottle of servings of protein powder not the most exciting thing in the world but I'm gonna say thanks and that's pretty much all we can do with him for the moment um, say not a problem the only other thing we can do is we could ask him if he wants to travel with me. I'm going to hold off on that. I don't want to get into the whole NPC traveling with me, but there's a pretty complicated system. They can actually basically join your party. You can indirectly control them, give them certain uh, options and responses that they are and aren't allowed to do. They'll follow you around, help you in combat. They also actually have their own stats and skills, and they can assist you whenever you try to do something using a skill. They'll add their skills to it and help speed the process up. You can learn things from them, go on quests f with them. A um, lot of gameplay potential and information there. And some of the quote unquote end game uh, quest lines are done through some of the NPC options. But for now, I'm just going to say goodbye. I don't want to deal with him too much more. We could look at his inventory, check his stats, but we're not going to do that for now. All right. I'm just using the numeric keypad to kind of move around in my environment. I wanted to check out these stairs right now we're pretty safe because we're in a closed evac shelter nothing can see in we can't see out so it's fairly safe the up or greater than less than symbols are how you move up and down stairs so I'm just gonna use that to move down a level and we've got closed doors in front of us you can open doors just by moving into them or you can press the O key to open it'll ask you for a direction and you just pick the direction you'd like to open and that opened the door we're gonna move up into the room now it's completely dark down here very dark I can see this far around me because of my night vision perk if I didn't have that my vision would be really really limited I can only see basically the spaces directly around me um, so night vision is very important I feel for especially starting people um, later when you're more experienced with the game you might play without it but I find it invaluable initially so by looking around pretty empty room we got one thing in the corner over here we'll move over next to it and I'm going to examine it by pressing the E key and picking a direction and you can see it's a tin can of canned tomato fresh one serving and there's some more specific detail down here and the way you can pick things up is through this menu if you use the left and right key you'll see a little plus symbol appear right here so when I move it to the plus you'll notice that the weight and the volume are updated so if I try to pick this up it's going to increase my weight and volume based on the stats for that can we're gonna go ahead and pick it up and if I check my inventory now you'll see that I now have that tin can of canned tomatoes as well as that bag of protein powder that the NPC gave us 
nothing else in the basement that's both good and bad depending on your starting scenario sometimes there'll be more information or more items down here so you always want to check it it's also a good place to set up a bed to rest because you generally won't get bothered down here uh, once the area is cleared out so we're going to close that door and go back upstairs with the other greater than less than symbol and that puts us back in this main room this here is a wooden countertop we can smash that, but I'm actually going to leave it. I'll show you why a little bit later. This is a computer terminal. We're going to examine it. And it tells us that login was successful. Press a key. And we have a few options. First thing we're going to do is pick number one for the emergency message. And it notes that greeting citizens, a biological attack has taken place and a state of emergency has been declared. Emergency personnel will be aiding you shortly. To ensure your safety, please follow the below steps. 1. Do not panic. 2. Remain inside the building. 3. Seek shelter in the basement. 4. Use provided gas masks. And 5. Await further instructions. Press any key to continue. Alright, next we're going to say contact us, number 3. And I'll let you read the information there. The reason I've done this, though, is that by doing that, we've actually updated something. I'm going to quit and shut down our use of the computer terminal. And the next thing I wanted to show you is the main map. If you press the M key, this shows a world map around you. The center point is always where you're located, and it's got a little white plus symbol there, as well as the at symbol. The at symbol is our body. The plus symbol is the location. And you can see here that denotes the an evac shelter. And up here, I want you to note this little red asterisk. That is a quest location. Basically, when we got the contact information through the computer, that's what it highlighted for us. It highlighted that there is an evac shelter, or I'm sorry, there is a uh, refugee center just north of us and that is the local rally point basically could be good could be bad to go there might be some NPCs that can be helpful to us or it could be completely overrun uh, with zombies that have infected everybody and be a death trap for us to try to go into we won't know until we actually go take a look but the map is a representation of the surrounding area. So like I said, this is the point where we are at. This is a road into town. All these little symbols here denote buildings within the town. To my left, or to the west, we have a forest. The green F symbols are forest or trees. And we can actually use the numeric keypad to move the menu screen over there. And you'll see up here it says F is forest. Down towards the south end of that list, you'll see some of the F's are actually blue in color. Those are swamps, which changes the terrain if we went to visit that a bit. There'd be some water pools, both salt and fresh water, as well as uh, more swamp-related terrain features. If we move over this direction towards the town structures, a couple things I want to point out on this map. All the symbols represent specific buildings, so let's go up and look at that refugee center, for example. If I put a cursor over it, it'll say up here that this is the refugee center. So it's a pretty large building, takes up multiple map spaces. If I come back down south a bit, these four H's represent a large power substation. This grayish greater than symbol is an office. The green ones are always houses, so a house, a house, a field, a house, then a street, and we've got a garage, electronic store, fire station. Ah, I definitely want to go visit the fire station. Lots of goodies in there that'll be really helpful to us. Then we've got a gun store, also very helpful, assuming we can manage to get into it. Subway stations, some more houses. I'm just kind of working my way through to see what buildings we have in the town. Fast food restaurant, grocery store, bar, liquor store, banks. All of these buildings have their own uses in particular. You'll kind of get used to through play figuring out which ones you want to head towards first or make sure to visit. Um, home improvement store can be very important. Ooh, veteran clinic or veterinarian clinic, two of them right near each other. Those are also important for uh, getting a hold of some medications. Uh, another home improvement store, antique store, that can be really good. Sometimes you can find antique uh, medieval type weaponry. 
A furniture store. I don't often get too much useful things out of a furniture store. Clothing store. Alright, so lots of things. And what's this big one down here? Ooh, cathedral. Alright. So, as you can see, we can move around the map. Now, the map is randomized, procedurally generated, so it follows certain rules based on how you generated your world. This is kind of a smallish, uh, small to mid sized city. They can get pretty big. Um, but you get an idea. There's a road system that runs around. There's probably going to be a road that leads out to the other side of town. And the road networks can be very large. The game world is essentially infinite. It'll just generate on the fly as you move around. And there's going to be various reasons why you'll want to do traveling. But uh, we'll get to that here in a bit. Other things you can do on the map, if you take a look here in this section, there you can move up and down through the various levels of the map. So if you wanted to move to a basement map or an overland map and so on, you would use those symbols. Uh, you can center on your character. This is an important one, create or edit notes. So what this does is if you find a particular location and you wanted to remember something about it for a particular reason, so let's say I moved down here through my exploring and found something, you can hit shift N to create a note. You can type in, well, let's say stuff to loot. Let's say I killed some zombies that had some stuff that I couldn't carry at the time. Press enter and now you have a little yellow blinking N symbol showing that there's a note there. And when you highlight it, it'll tell you up here, stuff to loot. You can color code those when you create them. So if you do shift N again, you can put a color code in front of it. So if I wanted it to be red, for example, I would do R semicolon stuff to loot. And the little symbol instead of yellow is now red. And then you can shift D to delete a note so you can get rid of them. Oops, really delete note. Yes. All right. The note's gone. So by doing things like that, you can remember things on the map. Other things you can do is, let's say I have gone to this house, fully explored it, fully looted it, and don't have any need to return there. You can use this section over here to toggle explored. So shift E. That will change the color. It's no longer the bright greenish color. It's gone to a kind of a flat gray color. That shows you that you've been to that house and no need to go back. So it makes kind of keeping track of things a little easier. You can also turn on off the blinking status and other choices. So a lot of useful things you can do for the map. You're going to be referring to it pretty often to kind of take a look around. I'm going to hit escape to get out of here. And I think what we're going to do before I actually get into moving around and doing some gameplay related stuff, we're going to pause or stop the video here and uh, pick up in the next episode. So I think we've covered enough for now. Hope you found the information helpful. If you like the series, please give it a like and hopefully subscribe. I plan to post a lot more videos as time goes by. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. Have a good day. Bye-bye.